Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the basics of linear equations, so kind of a review. So kind of looking at uh, equations that look like this. If you've never used my videos before, I highly recommend you pause and try the examples. Also, there are free guided notes available at DividingConquerMath.com. Okay, so let's talk about what what is this video really about. So linear equations in one variable. So the definition of that, this would be an equation of this form. So something that you could write like this. So it might not initially look like this, but you could ultimately force it to look like this. And so it's AX plus B. The A and the B would have a number in them. And then you solve for X. And so the thing that we are looking for with these linear equations are solutions. A solution is a value that when substituted into the variable of an equation makes the equation true. So the question I have here is, is x equals negative 1 a solution to either one of these? So this is just a little warm up if you're just getting started for today. Highly recommend you just pause real quick and, and try these and, and plug in x equals negative 1 to see if this works. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so plugging in negative 1, so it looks like this. Okay, so I want to see if this is going to give me 9. So if I work this out, negative 4 times negative 1, this is going to give me 5 plus 4, and that does indeed equal 9, so yes, that one's a solution. And then for the other one, so now I've got multiple instances of x here, so I just plug in negative 1 each time. So we've got 2 times negative 1 plus 3 equals 1 minus negative 3 times negative 1. So let's see, this is negative 2 plus 3. Is that going to equal 1 plus 3? So no, not a solution. And so this is basically how you know if you got it right. You can always double check any solution that you find. And so this actually, like when you take a test, this is nice because then before you turn in the test, you can go through and make sure you got everything right. Okay, so there are kind of two key things that help us solve equations. The first one is known as the addition principle. So I'm going to have A, B, and C. So these are going to be numbers that we can put in. So here's the addition principle. If A equals B, so look at what I'm doing here. A plus C equals B plus C, and A minus C equals B minus C. So basically, if you add something to one side to keep the equality, you add it to the other. If you subtract something from one side, then to keep the equality, you subtract it from the other. So whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, so let's just kind of take a look at a few examples of how to use the addition principle. So here I've got the equation x minus 4 equals 2. So really the, the idea with all equations is to isolate the x. And so right now we, the x is not isolated because there's this minus 4. So what you want to do to get rid of the minus 4 is to just add 4. So that will get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 4 to each side like this. So then notice negative 4 and 4, that just those cancel out the 4s, right? So then I just have to do 2 plus 4. And so on this side I'm left with x, and this side I have 6. So there's my solution. Then I can do a really quick check. 6 minus 4 does indeed equal 2, so we know we've got it right. So that's just what the addition principle kind of allows us to do. So I have two more examples here. If you want to try them, you can uh, pause the video and then hit play when you're ready. So for B, I'm going to subtract the 3 from each side like this. So once again, notice here, the whole point of this is to get the x by itself. So in doing this, the number that was on the x side should drop out. So I'm just left with x on this side. But what is 3 minus 3? It's 0. So this actually just equals 0. And that's totally fine. Because look, if you, if you ever get thrown off, you can always just do a quick double check. 0 plus 3, oh yeah, that does indeed equal 3. So we're good. OK, so for C, so this one, so I, in another video, I'm actually going to show you a shortcut for this. But just as it is, to get x by itself, I have x minus 1 third equals 1 half. So to get the x by itself, I have to add 1 third. So I'm going to add the 1 third up here just to give myself some space. So for this, to do x equals 1 half plus 1 third, the only way I can combine these is to get a common denominator. So to do that, um, so the common denominator between them will be 6. So I need to multiply 1 half by 3 over 3. So 3 over 3. And then I need to multiply the 1 third by 2 over 2. 
like this. Okay, so now I've got x's 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, and so then this is 5 over 6. Now, if you are not sure how to do this, I do have videos where I review how to do fractions and I break the whole thing down. This is not um, like one particular area that you want to be weak in. And it's very common for people to be weak in, in this. But you do, like if you find that, oh, I forgot how to do that, you totally want to go back and review it because otherwise it, it, it's just going to make you really uncomfortable every time you see fractions. So just kind of a pro tip there. Okay, so now let's move on. So let's talk about another principle here, the multiplication principle. So in this case, once again, I'm going to have A, B, and C. Those are going to be real numbers. And so the multiplication principle says, so if you have A equals B, then now, now notice what I'm doing. A, C equals B, C and a divided by c equals b divided by c. So basically, if you're going to multiply something to one side, you have to multiply it to the other. If you're going to divide something on one side, you got to do it on the other. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at this in action once again. So this one, I've got 3x equals 15. So notice how this is different from the other problems we were doing. Before we were doing addition and subtraction. Now this is multiplication. So this is 3 times x. So division and, and um, multiplication tend to go hand in hand. So since I'm multiplying these two things together, to get the 3 out, I'm going to divide by 3. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So notice what happens now. 3 divided by 3, that's going to just cancel out your 3s. So now I'm left with x equals what is five divi or 15 divided by 3? It is 5. And then once again, if you want to go back and check it, you can just plug it in. What is 3 times 5? It is indeed 15. So we found the right answer. Okay, so I've got 2 here. Again, if you just want to kind of dust off the cobwebs here, you can pause and then hit play when you're ready. So for this one, I've got 5x equals 0. So I, I'm just focusing on the x here. So 5 times x. So to get x by itself, I'm going to divide this side by 5. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. So this will cancel out the fives. Now a really common question I get, um, sometimes people forget where does the zero belong? Does it belong on top or on bottom? It's totally fine when the zero is on top. So zero divided by five will just give you zero and you're done. And then again, you can confirm this to yourself. What is five times zero? It's just zero, so we're good to go. Okay, now here for C, so this one's kind of interesting. Um, so negative two fifths. Um, x equals 10. So you might say, okay, I want to divide by negative 2 fifths, and you are correct. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 2 fifths. But here's what I want to point out. So in how I have this set up, I can see that the negative 2 fifths, so these both cancel out. But looking at this, this is kind of difficult to look at. So when that happens, if you're just like, okay, I don't know what this means, rewrite it. So this, the way that we're writing this out, we intend this to mean division. So I want to write this as x equals, so this is supposed to be 10 divided by negative 2 fifths. So let's just write that in another way. 10 divided by negative 2 fifths. And now that I've written it like this, well, think about what we know about division with fractions. I have to flip this, right? So this is going to turn into 10 times negative 5 over 2. So that's what I have to multiply. And then, remember this 10 is over an invisible 1, so I just multiply straight across. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. 1 times 2 is 2. So this is negative 50 over 2, so ultimately my answer is negative 25. So there you go. All right, so now let's combine these ideas. So we've looked at kind of the addition principle by itself, the multiplication principle by itself. So I just want to look at a few more examples. Um, so here's an example where we're combining the addition and the multiplication principle. So what is the standard kind of way that you want to go about solving these things? So you always want to get the x by itself. If the x is being multiplied some, by something, then you're going to save kind of that that um, division or multiplication for last. So the first thing that you want to do is get rid of the thing on the side that doesn't have an x. So in this case, that would be this 5. The 5 doesn't have an x, start there. 
so to get rid of the five, it's positive five. So I'm going to subtract it off like that. So now I'm left with negative four X. These fives dropped out and then 33 minus five is 28. Okay. So now that I have kind of the thing with an X um, isolated, this is negative four X. So now how do I finish getting the X by itself? Now I'll divide each side by negative four. So now the negative four will drop out on the left side. So I'm just left with X. What is 28 divided by negative four? Negative seven. And then just a reminder. So once again, if you're ever unsure about your answer, you can just plug it in. So this should give me 33. So let's see, this will give me five plus 28. That is indeed 33. So we're good to go. So whenever you are looking at your answer and you're like, uh, mm, not sure it doesn't feel right. Just double check to see if it is actually right. Okay. So now we're going to make this a little trickier. So I have this example, three X plus two equals two plus four X minus eight. So in this example, you, you've got to kind of scan across and before you start anything, just notice that on this side, there's actually something we can do. We have some like terms. So I can combine the two and the negative eight to start. So first, like if you, if there's simplifying that you can do on each side, do that first. So the left side is still going to be three X plus two, two, minus eight, remember that's a negative in front of it, two minus eight is negative six. So this is negative six plus four X. Okay, so now I have kind of a predicament here in that I have X's on each side. So when that happens, it doesn't matter which side you wanna bring the X's to, but you have to bring all of the X's to one side. And then you also have to bring all the numbers to the other side. So because we keep putting X on the left, we, we can just go about that way, I guess. So let's bring this four X over to the other side. So I want to get rid of the four X. So I'm going to subtract four X from here. Whatever I do to one side, I do the other side. So three X minus four X is going to give me negative one X. I can just write that as negative X. And then, so now that I've got that, this looks kind of like what we were doing before. So I want to get the, get rid of the two, bring the two over to one side. So I'm going to subtract off the two like this. So now I am left with, so now I've just got the negative X. So negative six minus two, that's negative eight. And now what do I divide by in this case? So I've got negative X here, but I want it just to be X. So in this case, now I can just divide both sides by that invisible negative one. And when I do that, so negative eight divided by negative one, just th that's just going to cancel out the negative. So my answer here will be X equals eight. Now I do have more examples that are like this. I'm just kind of showing you um, a, a breadth of examples in this video. If you want to see more examples like this, I have an uh, video where I just kind of show you more like this, but I'm going to show you another kind of tricky one just to show you the di different levels of complexity with this. But if you want to pause here and go review some of the other kind of examples, like the last two I showed you, go for it. So with this last one, so this is one now where I have actually a set of parentheses. There's not a whole lot I can do with this problem um, as it is, because notice on this side, there's no like terms. And then here there's, there's no like terms. The only thing I can really do is distribute the three. So, when that happens, when you have parentheses, a lot of times you're just going to be forced to distribute. So three times four is 12, three times negative two is six. Okay. So there we go. All right. So now I've got the same thing from before. And maybe you want to pause and see if you can finish this one. So I've got to get all the X's to one side and all the numbers to the other side. So just for fun, let's take this negative six X. Let's actually bring it over to this side. So I, I'm going to go, kind of a different direction. So I'm going to add six X to get rid of the negative six X. So I'm going to add six X to each side like this. And so now this is going to be 12 equals nine X plus six. So now I've got this kind of on one side, I got to get rid of this six. So let's subtract the six from each side. 
So 12 minus 6 is 6, so I get 6 equals 9x. So to finish getting the x by itself, what do you do? Um, so this is 9x, so I'm going to divide by 9. And so in this case, I get actually a fraction as my answer. So x equals 6 over 9. Now notice I can divide the top and bottom here by 3 to simplify that fraction, which you're always going to have to do. So this is ultimately x equals 2 thirds. That's the final answer. Now, I don't want this video to get too long, so I'm actually going to stop it here. I do want to say, if you feel like you need to see more examples, I have way more examples in my examples video. So I will drop a link to that in the description. And otherwise, for now, we'll, we'll call it that. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, I'll see you guys in another video.